All right, so in today's video, we're going to be looking at cells. Um, we're going to review a little bit of cell theory from last unit or last section, and then uh, talk about some of the parts of the cell. So um, there's three major principles to cell theory, and that was number one, that all living things are made up of cells. Two, cells carry out all the functions needed to support life. And three, all cells came from other living cells. And just focus on the two um, scientists that we talked about last section. That was um, Anton von Leeuwenhoek. He invented the microscope and observed things in water. And then Robert Hooke, who coined the term cell after observing cork. Uh, so cells can fall into two types. Um, there's prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Prokaryotes would be like bacteria. And eukaryotes would be a plant or animal cell. If we focus on the prokaryotes first, they're the first cells to evolve. So they're the most simple. They have no nucleus. Hereditary info. So what I mean by that is DNA. Um, it's the material that gets passed on from generation to generation. Um, it's contained within the cytoplasm, and the examples of prokaryotes are archaea and bacteria. Those are the two major groups of uh, prokaryotes. Next, we have eukaryotes. Eukaryotes evolved later on in time from pro prokaryotes. They have a nucleus. The hereditary information, or DNA, is contained within the nucleus. And your examples of this are animals protists, fungi, and plants. Um, so now we're going to look at all the different structures that perform special functions inside the cell um, and their different jobs. Okay, so if um, in a plant cell you'd have a, a cell wall, and it's the outermost part of the, the plant cell, um, uh, fungal and bacteria cells. It's made up, in plants, it's made up of cellulose. It's a rigid and strong structure, uh, provides support and protection for the cell. Um, you could compare it to a medieval wall in a city. Next up, you've got the cell membrane. So in an animal cell, that's the outermost layer. In the plant cell, it's just beneath the cell wall. Um, and um, one of the main components of animal cell membranes is cholesterol, uh, and that's the outermost covering of it. Um, it provides protection, um, controls the movement of things in and out of the cell, support, and maintains the internal conditions of the cell. And it's kind of like the border or a fence around a city. Um, next, you have the control center of the cell, the nucleus. It was identified in 1833 by Robert Brown. There's a nucleus in both plant and animal cells. Um, the nucleus is large, an oval shaped, and usually located centrally in the cell. Um, it controls all the cell activities, and it's the storage center for genetic information, um, the hereditary information, or the DNA. Uh, if you were thinking that in terms of city, it's like a mayor's office uh, in city hall. Um, so the cell is all the way filled up in both plant and animal with cytoplasm. Um, it's a clear, thick, jelly-like material. Um, so if Pasha is doing his um, cell with jello, the jello is like the cytoplasm in his um, model. It's located within the cell membrane. Um, it helps to support and protect cell organelles. Um, and it's also what things would get transported through. So it's kind of like the sidewalks that are found throughout the city. And then we have uh, the Golgi apparatus, discovered in 1898 by Camillo Golgi. Um, it's also in both plant and animal cells. It looks kind of like flattened membranes, um, or flattened stacks of membranes. It kind of looks like pancakes stacked on top of each other, um, if you look at a side view of it. 
Um, and it's important for processing packaging molecules like lipids and proteins uh, that were made by the cell. So you could think of it um, like a post office or UPS center of a city. Um, and then uh, we have ribosomes. They're found in both plant and animal cells. Um, they can be attached to the endoplasmic uh, membranes, the endoplasmic reticulum, or they can just float freely in the cytoplasm. They produce proteins. Um, it's really important. So everything, um, most things in your body are made up of a protein. Your muscles are made of protein. Um, and your ribosomes are responsible for making them protein. They're the smallest of the organelles, and they're kind of like the brickyard within the city because um, they supply the city with all the building materials. Um, endoplasmic reticulums in both plant and animal cells. Uh, it's a network of um, tubes and transport um, to move materials throughout the cell. And it comes in two types. You have smooth endoplasmic reticulum and rough endoplasmic reticulum. Um, and just the difference, smooth has no ribosomes, rough has ribosomes. Um, and it's kind of like the city's highway system for transporting materials. And then um, uh, mitochondria, which is in both plant and animals. Um, so it's funny, we always might think of plants as doing photosynthesis. And a mistake that commonly people make is that they say photosynthesis makes energy for the plant. And really what photosynthesis does is it makes sugars, um, which I'll talk about in, uh, next when I cover that, that organelle, but it's the mitochondria in both an animal and a plant that are going to break down sugar and release usable energy. Um, the... Um, Mitochondria looks like a jelly bean. If you were to break that jelly bean open, it has these folded membranes. Um, the more membrane surface you have, you have more surface area. And it's across that membrane that um, it's able to um, create more reactions and, uh, and harness more energy from foods. Uh, it's like the city's power plant. So then I'm going to jump to chloroplasts. So chloroplasts um, are found just in plant cells, uh, oval shaped, they're green because of the chlorophyll inside. Um, and they use the sun's energy to make sugars. So they make food for the plant in the form of sugar. And they're kind of like the solar panels uh, on the city's buildings harvesting sunlight. Um, and are important for plants to harness that energy and make sugar. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back um, to vacuole. So vacuole is the um, storage center. There's small ones in animal cells and in plants usually have a really large one. So plants uh, do photosynthesis day and night. So they don't just do photosynthesis when the sun's out. And so they need to have on hand a large storage of water um, and materials so that they can make sugar. So um, that's what they use their vacuole for. So when they need to make sugars with their chloroplasts, they have all those materials on hand. Um, vacuoles filled with fluid. Um, they're like the warehouses and water towers um, in the city. And then next you've got the lysosome. Um, that's just in an animal cell, uh, small and round in shape. Uh, breaks down larger food molecules into small ones um, and can digest and break down old cell parts. It's kind of like a city's recycling center. Um, that's the last structure that we're going to talk about today.